All right, we are playing Magic Realm. This is week two uh, of our Amazon Swordsman White Knight and Witch game. And <clears throat> um, the scores you can see in the upper right, four to four to two to two. Uh, both the Amazon and the Witch have scored multiple cards. And they both have some points in the categories. Uh, Swordsman has a single card and a little bit of gold, and of course the White Knight is winning prowess because of his Day 7 Serpent Rampage uh, up here, which which was nice. It was a good move. That was one of those um, it was one of those situations where I'm like, ah, <clears throat> that's that is that's Magic Realm. That is the perfect sort of thing where you you go ah, because each of the characters plays you know so differently uh, with similar mechanics but but so differently uh because of the specific details of of their uh of their build of their chits of their powers etc so very fun <coughs> uh, you'll have to excuse me i had sort of a weird allergy attack just before uh logging on to to, to this so i'm gonna be a little hacky sorry i'm an old man <laughs> I, i'm an old man um, I had a neighbor when I was growing up who every morning he smoked, right? Every morning at six or something, he'd get up super early because he had, he had an early job and he would, he would hack a lung up outside my window. And it was like an alarm clock. It was very comforting. Anyway, <clears throat> um, so we do need three more events. We haven't cleared any of these. Uh, the bounty is obviously through, uh, this week. Oh, the Monastery and the Hermit are both still scorable because no one has actually uh, uh, <clears throat> scored that point. So, let's uh, get three more. We have a Goblin Horde. Random clearing there. We have the Druid's Test. He also appears in a random clearing. And finally, the Circus. So, um, awesome. Let's... Uh, Uh, the Druid, the Circus, and the Goblins aren't uh, aren't in this. We have five Axe and one Sword Goblin. Sword Goblin. One, two, three, four, five. The joy of playing on Tabletop Simulator is infinite chits, uh, frankly. So, uh, pile them. Pile. There we go. Perfect. And then drag them back down over here. So let's let's roll random clearings for our goblins. Random clearing is ruins five. <clears throat> oh. Ruins five ain't great for the witch, and we're gonna have trouble because that is gonna look like uh, that's gonna look like something else. So let's put something on there to let us know that's the horde. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a chip for that. So we're gonna use uh, objects and components, and we're just gonna pull like a checker or some bullcrap here. So let's pull a checker. A red checker. There we go. Done. And we will put the goblins on top of the red checker. This is my horde. Not to be confused with just the plain old goblins. Now these goblins will also roam. Uh, they and So this makes this tile super dangerous. Uh, and the witch is going in there. And normally it wouldn't be a problem. But that sword goblin is a little dicey for her, I think. Um, because she's hard to hit. If she flips, then he can get to her. He she can get to him. So um, all right. Uh okay, so we got the goblin horde out. And obviously, if you kill the sword goblin, you get a little bonus. They're not great weapons, but they all have like they're all base weapons plus a thing, right? So, all good. 
<clears throat> um, okay, we also have the Druid's Test. The Druid appears in a random cleric. Bring him a potion, he gives you a reward. Crag 3. Done. And the circus in town. The circus only appears in one of set of locations. Five. Borderland 2. Ooh, okay. And, well, huh, interesting. So, okay. The Swordsman will definitely at least stop there. Um, because <clears throat> there's no reason not to pick up the blowgun that will capture a tremendous creature. Um, cut this. And first to bring the creature gets a VP, 10 gold, and two times the prowess value. That's a big, big, that's a big bonus for what ultimately is not a lot of risk. Um, so there you go. So let's write our day, and let's go from there. Amazon is first. Her day is... Oh gosh, let me not die in the caves with the demon and the trolls. That is, that's pretty much her day. So, she is going to hide on day eight. Extra move and move. And her ultimate destination is going to be cave one. Hopefully. Done. Done. Uh, next is the swordsman. The swordsman is going to uh end a day here so that the only bad thing is that you have to end a day in at the circus that sort of sucks a little bit but um i think it might be worth it because it's such a good cheesy tremendous it's a way for these light characters to be able to easily deal with a tremendous guy who's maybe blocking them <clears throat> so I think we're going to I think we're going to hide a bunch move to the circus and we will take the blow gun. I don't think the witch is going to necessarily uh do that. I think she needs to well that's that's the white knight. Let's let's do the white knight first here. So the white knight I mean, I think he will also just hide one, two, three. I think he'll hide and go to the circus, not because necessarily just it's a convenient place to stop. And <clears throat> that ends his day at a dwelling, because the circus counts as a dwelling for most everything. So that'll get him his windfall and his five gold and his card. Um, and there you go. And then the witch, uh, she has a torch, I believe. Yep, seems she does. So she goes one, two, I think hide one, two, because she has an extra move in caves, um, because of the torch. So extra hide, move, and move to the horde. <clears throat> well, the goblin horde. Done. So that is her day eight. And it's time to roll monsters. The five spiders appear, which of course... The White Knight has left <clears throat> where spiders would appear because that's the way the luck rolls in the game. Um, I think the Swordsman goes first, knowing that he's hiding three times and going to the circus. Yeah, so he's going to hide and go there. Uh, no spiders. Done. And he gets a blowgun, which we're going to, um, we're going to represent by... A miniaturized circus. 
uh, icon there, and he is done. And then we have the Amazon, and this is the most important hide roll of her game right now. And she gets it, so that means she goes one, two, um, and <clears throat> uh, spiders, nothing, so done. And she is done. The White Knight hides and goes here. Let's see if he is hidden. It won't matter, really. He is, and he's going to get uh, a blowgun. <clears throat> and the Oprah of blowguns at the moment. Um, so, done. And then the witch hides. And she's going to walk, walk, done. And I don't think anything appears there either. So it's quiet day, but the witch, I think, will fight. Uh, do we have six? No, I think it's five axe goblins. <clears throat> so, she is hidden. She is obviously going to pop black. So that's fatigued. She is now a tremendous troll. She's still hidden, by the way, because she can stay hidden. She cast on herself, quote-unquote. Um... She is going to target, since it really matters, um, the sword goblin and attack him. <clears throat> and she is sort of hoping for a flip. She's because I, mean, I think the flip, the flip gets her the auto hit, and that's what she really needs to deal with this guy. So let's see where he goes. He could line up with a one or a four, but he doesn't. And then does he flip? And if he flips, we're in good shape, but he doesn't flip. So she becomes unhidden and she is done. And then we're gonna do uh, this. They cannot hurt her on either side. It's this guy mainly. Um, now, she fatigued, so last round doesn't count to the two that you stalemate. So she does not have a stalemate uh, around sort of set up. Let's roll the 33% chance that these guys stay in line. They do. Perfect. Does the goblin flip? He does. Again, doesn't really matter uh, since we will hit him first and kill him first. Uh, do the second pile, does the second pile flip? No, does the third pile flip? Yes. <clears throat> so, uh, she hits him on time four and kills him. Done. The first round is actually the most dangerous because they outlength her. But first round she was hidden, so it didn't matter. So that goblin is dead. Um, and now it is the next round. And again, we, we're not stalemated yet. Oh, he's, he's flipped, by the way. Um, and again, it doesn't matter. It really is just a 33% chance to hit each time. So we're going to roll and see. They're, they're going to line up. These two are going to switch. So again, I, I hate to say I'm not even going to flip them. I, I, I hate to do this. If, if, you're play, if, you're, if you're coming here to learn the game, I apologize. <laughs> Because, uh, because, um, so bam. So she's going to hit him and kill him with heavy damage. And so she does kill him. And again, we have not yet, uh, stalemated. So so let's roll fit. Okay. So there you go. There's, there's a round. So. You know, these guys all shift. And then, again, we roll each box to flip. It doesn't matter in this case, simply because of the way the battle is going to go. If anything on either of these sides mattered, we would play it straight. 
But so that's the first stalemate round. If you get two in a row, um, then the combat ends. So she needs, she has a 33% chance of killing this goblin, and she has a 66 and blah, 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 right? 33 and a third, 66 and two thirds chance of the combat ending. That's the problem with the troll. The things that you can easily kill with the troll, you can't hit typically. And the things that you can hit, there's not a lot of them, and they usually have, they're usually fairly dangerous to you. Things like the giants, things like the dragons, and so on. There's very few, or you can't kill them in one shot because you only do heavy damage. So let's roll a one or a four, and we roll a four. So done. The stalemate's erased. We kill the third guy. Going to target him. 33% chance. Nope, doesn't get it. So that's one stalemate. Second round. Oh, lines up. One. So she kills it. <clears throat> Bam. Goes here. We only have two left. So 33%. No. They flop and she misses. Final round. Uh, stalemate here. 33%. No, she misses again. So these two goblins survive. And we only kill four of them. So was a good fight for our our uh, crone here. She gets one, two, three, four. So she gets 10 points because each one of these is multiplied by their order in the day. So she gets 10 prowess. That is actually going to put her in second place in prowess, taking the point from the Amazon. So we update the scores. Now, she also has killed the big goblin. I'm going to actually put the big goblin down here um, as a trophy, just because these guys can be deleted because they're just extra goblins. And then her troll goes back to the absorb essence. And she does not have any black magic left. She really needs to get black magic. Oh, there's the extra goblin. Okay, well, let's delete him too. Um, she needs to get black magic again because she is now vulnerable to all of that. So, uh, done. Interesting. Again, uh, and a good use of the Tremendous Troll. But my guess is, I mean, don't get me wrong. She wants to kill those guys. And if you think about it, in two rounds, she has essentially a two-thirds chance of failing each round. You multiply that together, you get four nines. And so that is a five-ninths chance in two rounds of killing the guy. So it is a coin flip about <clears throat> with a tiny bit of the coin weighted to her side. So I think she will try to do that again. But she does need to get some black magic back on her uh, in her uh, in her in her magazine, as it were. So that was day eight. So looking at day nine, um, looking at day nine, the Amazon has Windfall, Learn a Spell, or Curse Breaker. Now, these are terrible. She needs to get rid of those cards. Like, that's, that's where I think um, she's in trouble. Her cards suck for her. And... Um, she's sort of in a little bit of a bind in terms of her position. The question is, do you search for the altar or not? The altar has four large treasures. Um, there are spells learned. She cannot learn them at the uh, because she didn't have any of that. Um, she otherwise would need to get back to a dwelling, probably the inn. And... You know, and ditch her, ditch her cards. She would, she would get the five gold. She would ditch her cards, and, and go that route. The other option is to loot the altar. The problem with looting the altar, of course, is that you end up in this bad situation where. Hmm. Oh, and by the way, the ghosts regenerate because they regenerate every day seven. So keep that in mind also. <laughs> um. 
So if we look at, so, so, so a couple things. You do the altar. So you either get the, try to get the altar, but you only have two phases because you're in the dark. And she doesn't have any way to mitigate that, unlike the witch. So that does suck. Oh, by the way, the witch, because she's going to record daylight phases, uh, this is going to wound. So done. So the witch needs a rest bad. <laughs> She's like, I'm so tired. Um, so we will need to get her rested. And she needs... So go back to the Amazon. I am going to guess that this is all going to suck for her if she stays. So what we're going to do is we're going to hide extra move and move and hope to get as far through that valley as possible done um the swordsman okay so we are back to uh the swordsman who still has a take cover card so he still has sort of an advantage and he's going to try to so he's going to go one two one, two, three. You know, one, two. That's, that's all he gets, right? He gets two moves into the caves. Done. So we're going to move to Borderlands 5. So we're going to move and move to 5. Done. Uh, the White Knight. So what the hell is the knight trying to do now? Uh... I would say, I'm going to say he heads back. Well, do we want to go on that? If we want to go on the rolling of five, that's a rough haul. <laughs> Isn't it? That is a rough haul for him. What does the tremendous flying dragon look like? A four. So he can kill the Tremendous Flying Dragon, hidden, in a heartbeat. <clears throat> With that Morning Star, if he comes from ambush, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a little out of theme for the White Knight to be continuously ambushing shit, but when he does, he is really good at it. <laughs> um, so... <clears throat> But again, you're in the dark in the horde, and so finding that thing is a pain in the ass. What else can appear? Dank. Uh, dank M? What is Dank M? Oh, no, it's Dank C. That's caves. That's caves. The high pass is caves. Dank C is just going to be the serpents, which he's already taken care of. So that is a strangely... What do you want to say? This is a strangely safe tile for the White Knight. <clears throat> also, uh, oh, and he spent, I'm sorry, he ends the day at a dwelling. So that's, that's my fault. So that's going to give him nine bucks, which doesn't put him in, in the money, but it does. The nice thing is it cycles this card. So let's let's do that for him first. That's my fault. And he gets a tiny hut. And the tiny hut is place a visitor on the board in a mountain clearing of your choice. Um, I'm just going to do that now. And then I will get the card and flip it uh, tomorrow. What visitor does he like? Uh, none of them. So he's going to take the scholar who has treasures and put him in a mountain clearing of his choice, I'm going to say that the Scholar is going to live here. And so we'll put the Scholar to the side, just to, that. that's where he's living. So done. Um, so he turned in, and he got Tiny Hut, 
and we don't know what he has now. So we're we're gonna sit with that. Uh, what is the knight gonna do though? Uh, It'd be better if it were closer to day seven. We would go back and try to kill that spider. But the spider's still worth two points to us. And what else? Stink, dank, and patter. Let's go one... We know that the we know the trolls are gone. Uh, we know that Smoke C is gonna pull this guy. I'm gonna say the White Knight can move with impunity, and he's just gonna go there. So he's gonna move, move to Borderlands six. Or do you move, move to border? So it largely comes down to, do you go for the horde or do you go into the mountains and try to find a pattern, you know, try to find something else? Maybe you beat the swordsman to the monastery. Maybe you get that victory point and then get your two points for the spiders. So making that tile potentially worth three points. So there's no guarantee that a spider will show up in the mountains. He could be showing up in the crag based on the chits that we draw. Or the or the ledges, right? So, um, uh, so but the so that's where we're gonna go. We're gonna go to five. So move, move, Borderlands five. Move, move, BL five. That that's I think the move. I think we start going. Plus the lost castle's not found yet either. All of that uh, uh, plays into getting more mountain tiles opened up. Done. The witch needs to rest desperately. So, uh, does she have anything at all that is going to help her? I mean, she's out of magic, like just out of plain old out of juice. So I think she moves to three. So she's going to move to three and she's going to hide. And then she is going to rest and rest and i think that's all she she suffers a little bit in that she doesn't have uh an extra re uh, extra phases extra magic phases or, or like a lot of the other spellcasters all have hey you get an extra uh enchant phase or the wizard you don't have to do an enchant phase before you like they all have extra the witch mm, it doesn't have it and what's her buddy gonna do uh he is going to peer so let's look at the peer chart. Clues and paths. Locate. All right. I think, I think he's going to go one, two, three, four. So we're just going to put him there. He doesn't do anything else, but that's what he does. So we are done. Okay. <clears throat> so, um... It's day nine. Let's uh, let's get the day marker. That took a long time to to figure out that day. That's my fault. Um, one dragons. All the dragons are gonna show the hell up. So, uh, the swordsman who is uh, move moving to five also. Is ugh. he doesn't know he's moved moving to five. He doesn't know the paladin is move moving to five. He knows that he's unhidden and he knows dragons are gonna appear. So I think what he's gonna do is he's gonna go absolutely dead last. Um because he needs to see where everything is, kind of hopefully something will have jumped on someone else. He knows he's stuck. Once he goes there, he's going to get jumped by a dragon. So he's going to let this play out. So the familiar moves, and now the witch moves. The witch goes here. The witch is going to hide. Still has no magic, but she does hide this time. 
and she's going to rest twice. Um, and she wants a black back for sure. Done. Uh, oh, she doesn't, that's a gray. Uh, she's going to pull this one back. And hell, she'll pull both of these back. Done. And that's it. She is done with her move. Um, and I don't think anything happens because it's dragons. No, we had no dragons in this for her. Uh, the Amazon is going to, I believe, uh, yes, he's going to hide. So this is an important role again for her, and she does. And then she moves to here, and then the ghosts pursue, because the ghosts always are prowling. The White Knight, with impunity, goes 1-2. And unfortunately, he pulls uh, both Smoke and Roar. Not in the same clearing, though. Smoke goes directly to him. Like that. And Roar appears down there. And that sucks a little bit, because now the Swordsman is going to yutz on in here. He's like, son of a bitch. <laughs> um, and it wouldn't have mattered because they both moved to the same place. So that draws that dragon. So now we have two dragons and two unhidden characters just happily uh, uh, dancing in the cave. So we got two fights. We're going to do the Amazons first. So currently nothing is on her sheet. She's going to pull this guy down to target. And she's going to... Pull the sword and the M3, and let's see if this guy doesn't line up. So he goes all the way down there. Does he flip or not? He does flip, so she misses him. Um, and now both of these guys are on her sheet like that, and she needs to actually pay attention to what she's doing. So we're gonna do, we're gonna do that. Uh, right? Oh, and she. Oh, we have this guy. Huh. Well, we got a buddy sheet. Let's let's pull the buddy sheet out. Hold on. I mean This does have the chance to suck, but she's going to, so she's going to lure this guy to this sheet. Done. Like that. She's going to play on this side. Okay. And she'll target there. Like this, playing just like that. So, um, let's roll to see where he ends up. He ends up lining straight across. Does he flip? He doesn't flip. So she's going to kill that guy. And that's actually too bad. I, I sort of maybe shouldn't have done that because when you kill a guy with your buddy, you don't get the the multiplier. So she's actually going to lose out on some points here. Um, but let's let's see how this goes. So where does this dude end up? One. So he's going to line straight up. Does he flip or not? He does flip. Well, that actually sucks. She could he could kill that guy. Um, the bowman. Has to roll on the missile table. He only rolls one die on the missile table because he is a great archer, like the Woods Girl, and and so on. He rolls a single die. Two. So it goes up a level. So he does light, medium, heavy, tremendous damage and kills that dude. We don't get the multiplier, so it's worth four prowess to us. And that puts the Amazon at ten prowess. Which then ties the witch. Um, which sucks a little bit because now I gotta manipulate um, the scoreboard. <laughs> so, ties the witch. And there you go. Makes the final scores look a little bit like that. Um, 
Um, yeah, so we have three and a half to four. So she steals a half a point back with that kill, and she clears that valley out for future generations. I mean, the ghosts are just going to come back. Um, but now we have this fight, and so this fight is sort of intriguing. Um, so <clears throat> we got these guys between the swordsman and the white knight. So the question is, is anyone luring anyone else? So the weird part is, the weird part is they both sort of want that dragon, the big dragon, because they can both just tranquilize it and be done and drag that thing straight back to the circus. And that's worth actually a ton of, of shit. So that is going to be the point of contention, I think. Um, the other dragon, so the problem, of course, is the other dragon really isn't, isn't as dangerous to the knight as it absolutely is to the swordsman. The swordsman can't kill either of these guys. Um, so let's uh, let's see. So I don't think neither of them lure anyone. Um, neither of them lure anyone. I think. Now, the main problem is, <laughs> yeah, neither of them or anybody. Um, so we're going to assign randomly both of these guys. So I'm going to say that on a one, two, or three, it goes left. On a four, five, or six, it goes right. So this dragon gets assigned to the white knight, and this dragon gets assigned to, so the, 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 sh the, Crappy as possible, th um, which McCall for well, so he's on his sheet, he's on his sheet. Um, he's obviously going to play his, <clears throat> and I don't think this thing goes any faster than a four. So obviously we're going to target that guy. Uh, the white knight can't alert his weapon. He could just play a move and dodge this guy and try to shoot the other guy also. In which case they would both attack at the same speed, same time. I would I would probably just be tempted to roll off and give it to one or the other of them. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think he's also gonna target this guy. The white knight will target him. Now he will play a move so as to not be auto hit by this dragon. Um But he is, I mean, and don't get me wrong, I, I yeah, hmm. Although I will say, both of these dudes probably have not acted, like, this weapon is inactive. So can I activate a weapon without, um, let me get my, I'm going to pause this for a second, and I'm going to go grab uh, some some information. Okay. So, interestingly enough, let's assuming that we did not um, have the 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 blowgun active because that would have that that doesn't you know um, necessary and and we we probably played this very fast and loose in the past. Uh, in this case, with two characters vying for you know a thing, let's uh, we're going to worry about it a little. 
And the problem with that is if this thing is inactive, um, then, you know, active and, and, and being unhidden, this, you know, so this thing is inactive. So you're probably going to have to activate it slash alert it. And that's going to mean that the swordsman is going to be super vulnerable for a round, if nothing else. Um, so literally, he would he would activate it now. And the problem with this thing is that on its inactive side, it is nothing. The blowgun is nothing or tremendous three. So. And the, the, does, the counter doesn't do it justice here. Um, I should make a below gun counter. Um, so yeah, so so this round, so he activates this as his um, action in the encounter step. But then he is si a sitting duck on two thirds chance he's gonna get killed. Unless he literally lets, you know, and, unless, you know, so I, th I, th I think just given this, the way this worked out, I think the swordsman has to run away. I don't think he has an option to, and he can run away. He can easily play this L3 and just be gone. But I think he has to run away because he needs to get that thing alerted before he's gonna. And so he's done. So the white knight, well, he's going to be done. The white knight has now has to figure out um sort of what, you know. So as he sees the deployment, he also would have to get this thing alerted. So he could activate that and that would be his his turn. His action step would be to do that. And since the blowgun has no attack, um, so he would have to suffer two attacks from this, this dragon to blowgun the tremendous dragon. One attack this round, and then next round as he blowguns the other guy, he's going to have to suffer the attack on, on him. Sure. So, well, and then he's going to have to suffer another attack. Yeah, I'm not, not loving this all of a sudden. So it's almost three rounds, because then you have to re-pull this. I don't, I don't, I don't love where we end, where we're ending up here. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of what, what's going on. I feel, I feel like we're in a little bit of a state. Um, so what I'm going to do is fine. I'm not going to target this guy. Um, we need to, so, so the swordsman runs away. He's going to run away. So this guy is now on, not on no one sheet today, this, this time through. Um, we are going to go and attack him instead. And don't get me wrong, this sucks because we are slower. Um, our attack is slower. And we can do that. But that is also super dangerous. Because next round, this guy's going to come over to our sheet. If we haven't hit this guy. If we hit this, so if we hit this guy and kill it, we will take damage to our armor, but we will have killed the guy. Done. Then the dragon comes over. And then we can deal with the tremendous dragon. Now the problem is you can't do the activation thing. Like you'd have to do that. That has to be your whole. So, so I think he would then just try to kill the dragon with the 
problem being that he's going to take a two-thirds shot. He's going to take a two-thirds shot um, from this guy with an unalerted weapon. If he hits him. If he misses, weapon is alerted. The big dragon comes over. We probably kill him first. And then deal with the little one. Which almost might be better in a weird way. It might be better. So, so if we hit this guy, we're unalerted. And then this dude comes over. And then we have to suffer, like I said, a two-thirds attack. Really only one, well, two-thirds, because he's going to potentially hit us. Yeah. Um, although one of, those, one of those thirds gets the dragon killed also, because we can, we can play a T over strength that weapon and get him killed but not while playing um okay so i think i've talked myself into it he's not going to play an attack this round if he doesn't play an attack he misses automatically and this thing's going to flip so i'm gonna let this dragon have a go at me i'm not going to target anyone I want this weapon alerted when it comes over so I can cap this guy. So we just have to be missed this round. We are not missed this round. So this dragon's going to hit us. He's going to damage this armor and ping us with, with some damage. And so I'm going to wound this guy and I'm going to fatigue that guy. Uh, shh, no, this guy. Done. This dragon comes over to the sheet. Our weapon is alerted. Uh, we're going to play the... Uh, so we're going to play the H5 instead. Because we sort of have to. Well, no, we don't have to. And I'll, well, I mean, we do because we need a tremendous here. So we have to tremendous this. Um, oh, we, I'm, I'm sorry. So, and we have to roll to see if the dragon flipped or not, this guy. So he did flip. So he did medium damage. He still wounded us, just didn't damage the armor. So that's fine. Okay. I don't know if I did that well or correct or what. I, it doesn't, doesn't feel right, but we're going to stick with it. Dragon comes over. We're now hitting a T3. So we're going to kill that dragon before any of this crap hits us. So this is a winner right here. This guy is going to hit us no matter what. And we just want him to not flip pretty much. So I think this round we're good. We can also fatigue a... Um, is actually good. We can fatigue a fight. So that, that actually helps us. So we're going to take a wound to fatigue a fight. So let's see where all these guys line up. Three. So these two flip like that. Does the dragon head flip over? It does. Does the dragon here flip? He does not. So in order, this attack at T3 hits this body and kills him and negates the head. So done. Weapon becomes unalerted. And we do that. He hits us. Bam! For medium damage. It doesn't kill the armor. 
It does wound us again. We are going to wound the fight H5 because I don't think any of that matters. And we are going to... Uh, mm, eh, eh, I don't like any of this. <laughs> we are going to... Um, I need this fight H6 in play. So we can't wound it. We're going to... We're going to do that. We are going to, I think we can pull this back like this. I think we can fatigue two asterisks and pull one back like that, even though it's not the same type. I'm going to go with that for now. Um, I'm, I'm in here somewhere. Uh, if you play on the as much as I play as I chits of the same type. Damn. Okay. So he can't pull back a move if he fatigues that fight. I think we're still going to fatigue that one because we can and we sort of need to do that done. So this guy hits us done. So now we're in the next round. Um, nothing we do is going to matter here. So we're going to just play a plain old H6. We're going to play the move H4. And we're going to obviously hope for um, the best here. So... I suppose we hope this guy lines up. He doesn't. He goes down here. Does he flip or not? He does. That's good for us. He's going to miss us this round. We're going to miss him this round. So this flips. We have to fatigue a move. We're going to fatigue that move. Um, done. And now we're going to play like this and hope this guy doesn't flip. Uh, he does flip. Flop down there. We're looking for the 70% no flip. He doesn't flip. We hit and kill him with undercut. And we fatigue yet another move. And we are done. Um, so we're going to get 10, 20 prowess from that. To make our score 47 prowess. And these guys all go to the dead, the dead zone. Uh, but man, that was costly for the White Knight, who, who needs to now understand that he gets an extra rest phase every damn day. Because he's going to need it. Okay, so that's where we're at there. Um, and I think we are done with the day. So a little bit of a long day nine. And we may call this one short here, um, just to, just so it's not, you know, two and a half hours long or whatever. Um, so let's go there and we need to write some moves. So for the Amazon, um, she needs to Get rid of these cards. These cards are holding her back now. So she's going to go one, two, three, four, and she's going to hide. Yeah, so we're going to move and hide. The only problem being bats would suck. Uh, because you're going to get a bunch of bats, and she cannot flee from bats. She can flee from a lot of shit, but not bats. So I think that's the one thing we don't want. We don't want a six. Um, so what I'm going to do is, for this time, 
I'm actually going to hide twice and then extra move, move, and move. And I'm going to end up in four to avoid the extra owl chit. So if I do get bats, I'm only fighting a single bat and not three of them. Um, so we're done there. The swordsman has to go out to three. So the swordsman's first move is to move three. He does get four actions though. So that's good for him. Um, oh, God damn it. I should have played that totally differently. I'm not going to undo it. Um, the swordsman should have taken cover with his card. And we get trinket. So let me let me put that trinkets for the white knight. Encounter a goblin. Instead of battling him, give him a small treasure. Done. Oh, and giant. This is a giant. So trinkets, giant. You will take your small treasure and give you a large treasure in exchange. So we're going to trade beads effectively is the idea. So the what the what the swordsman should have done. So my mistake was I forgot the take cover card. Um, again, it's a it's a professional uh, uh, hazard if you're playing four characters is that you sometimes forget individually what each of them can do at any given moment. I should have taken cover. Then I'm hit. Then I can swap out alert, and I could have probably shot that guy before the white knight gets to him. And then he could have that and take that back to the circus. That could have been sort of what he does. He would not only have stole effectively, what, 15 prowess from the White Knight, but then he would have had um, the trophy to drag back to the circus. Now he has no such thing. So a little bit, a little bit depressing there. Um, but I'm okay. Let, let's just stick with that. So, the swordsman needs to move to three. And then the question is, what is he going to do from there? Still, the goal is to get down to his flag. But... It is looking a little dicey for him, or dicier. Uh, but now this, the Borderlands at least, is a pretty open tile. There's nothing else going to appear here um, because we've cleared it out. So he's going to move to three and then five, I think, is his move. Move three and then move five. So he effectively lost a day uh, with that. Done. Um, White Knight. Oh, I mean, the white knight has got to hide. So he's got to get out of, he absolutely has to get out of here. He, he so, so really has two options. And, and again, we could, so this is a little bit of a retrofit too. His options would be to run out of the clearing to three, so that he gets an extra phase. So he would move three and then essentially apply four rests. Or he has to move into here. So I say the White Knight's going to run at the end of that fight. Once he kills the guy, he runs out. Well, or do you press forward? He's not in a great position. But he is, I think we're going to, so we'll, we'll, but I, th um, I don't know that the, the Lost Castle is only a third chance to be there. All right, let's hide and move forward. So we're going to hide, move into the mountain, and extra rest, done. So that's going to be his first thing. So there you go. The witch still needs, so she's going to um, use her spell X, her enchant X phase. Um, they used to be called spell phases. If you're, if you're new to Magic Realm, 
uh, and you hear someone say an enchant phase, that is sort of what they used in, or a spell phase, I should say. Spell phase is what we uh, they used in, you know, in the earlier game. We have to burn one before anything gets done. Then we're going to use one. That's going to flip a black. And then I will do another one to flip both of these. So I have two good rounds of, uh, uh, of, of doing what I need to do. And then the question is, do you walk back in there immediately? Do you just go, yep, going in. Going to try to kill these guys before anything bad happens. The only shitty possible thing would be, nope, they can't kill the Tremendous Troll. So, so, and that's pretty good. So I think, I think she literally walks back into that clearing at this point. She pops all that. That is three rounds. And then she moves back into the goblins. Done. And so that is it. She that, That's the move. That is day 10. And now we need a monster roll for the day. Dragons again. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Um, I think that the swordsman, both the swordsman and the white knight know that we're safe here so i think the swordsman will just go first and he moves back into there and nothing appears because we've killed it all so he's gonna go first uh the cat is going to peer four times uh that is nothing i don't think to, so what is four on peer let's look up four on the peer table it is hidden enemies pointless uh five is Clue. So she gets to look at these chits. Uh, flutter and bone. So she knows nothing good is in there. So that's two. Three. No, nothing. So the cat doesn't find Jack. She is going to do her thing. So three spell phases gets these two flipped. She moves back in. Doesn't even hide. Doesn't even hide. Bam. And I don't think anything appears there because it's dragons. So done. Uh, the white knight is going to hide and move in. So he hides. He does hide. He moves into here. He rests. And that's going to pull back. Let's pull back. Oof. Let's pull back that. That's, that's bad, but... It gives us a round at least to see what's what. And we get smoke and the lost castle. Lost castle is in one. As it always is. The smoke M is going to draw these guys. Which sucks a little bit because that is directly on him. These guys can get hard to deal with. But he's hidden. So we're going to remain that way for the moment. And we're done. And then the Amazon is going to move into Deep Woods 4. Uh, 1, 2, 3, like that. And she's going to be hidden. Pretty much, yeah. So she's hidden and nothing appears because it's dragons. So we have two fights. Uh, one. So. This is not a great fight for the knight. in the state he's in. It's a fine fight for him if he's not in this state, but not a great not a great way for him to start. So what we're going to do is we are going to alert our weapon because no one's on our sheet. We will play this. We will target this guy. The only problem is if he flips, this all goes to hell pretty quick. Um... But if we kill him round one, I think we're good. I think we're okay. So let's roll to see where he ends up. He flips down to the bottom. 
Does he flip over? He does. So we miss him. And that's round one. And now we have to deal with two of them. So we're going to go like this. I'm going to play like this for the moment. We will have to fatigue. That's going to suck. Uh, done. Let's see where these guys end up. I shouldn't have done this. Okay, he lines up. That's that's probably good. Uh, he goes down here. Does the first box flip? No. Does the second box flip? Yes. So he misses. So we kill him on time three. So we'll go first. Time three, we kill that guy. He's dead. Then this guy misses. We have to fatigue a move. Unfortunately, that's going to mean fatiguing pretty much like that. Our weapon goes unalerted, and we have a little bit of an issue, which is this guy's going to hit us. Um, if he flips, it doesn't matter. If he does this, so we're going to play like this, because it doesn't matter. Um, he's going to hit us either way, or he's either going to flip and not do anything, or he's going to hit us and damage the armor and wound us. So, we're going to play like this. Does he line up? He's not going to line up. He's going to drop one. Now, we're hoping beyond all hope that he flips. He doesn't flip. So, he's going to hit us and damage the armor, and he wounds us. Uh, we're going to play that. And... Yeah. But the weapon flips. So he's up here now again. We'll put him there. And two. He goes down to the bottom. Does he flip? He flipping does. So that sucks. So we miss and he misses. So that's one round of stalemate. He doesn't line up. So he's going here. Does he flip? He does not flip. Uh, that'll be, unfortunately, our second round of stalemate. Um, yeah. Second round of stalemate. We killed one guy. We got five uh, prowess. That is 52. Um, it doesn't do us any more or less good. Uh, what it does do is make us even a little bit of a shittier situation even now. And we really... Oh, oh and we have to... I'm sorry. Lost Castle. My fault. I did not draw all these goddamn chits. Uh, the cairn is here. The pool is here. Patter here. Layer in three. Flutter in two. So we are going to get... So we got smoke, and that was these guys. Um, the layer is going to draw this guy. And Flutter 2 would draw, but it doesn't because there's no one left to draw. Um, but it does tell us we need to get the hell out of Dodge at the moment to rest up. We just don't have a good place to do it. Um, but I have a plan. So so that's that's him. So that, that's where he ended up. Um, good... It's a good it's a good tile. There's three treasure sites in it. So I think I think we're gonna spend some time there. But man, we are hurting uh as the white knight. Uh the witch has two more goblins to kill. So we got two goblins. We are of course becoming 
the troll. I mean, she's not even hidden, right? Yeah, she's not, not even hidden. Um, so we're going to become the troll. We got that there and that there. And we're looking for the one third chance that we hit this guy. We don't. So that is a, so we fatigued. So that doesn't count. That's not a stalemate round. So round, next round, we, okay. So we don't hit. And that is a stalemate round. This is our second chance on this. We don't hit again. So done. Combat ends. Uh, and that sucks, but combat ends. And we are done. Okay, so where the hell are we at? We're on day, that was day 10. Um, let's write day 11 here. So day 11. One, two, three, four, five. So I think one, two, three, four. Does the Amazon, she doesn't love the rogues, she doesn't hate the rogues, they're neutral. She likes the patrol, they can show up. So she she doesn't like the company. That would be the only bad thing is the company shows up. Can she run from the company or not? Like if the company shows up and dinks with her. Yes, I think so. Could have just searched through that pile, right? And of course, it's not a deck. Can I do that? Can you search through? No, you cannot. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, she's going to just run to the inn. So she's going to move, 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 extra move to the inn. Done. That's her, that's her day. Uh, the swordsman. The swordsman also likes the look of this. He's going to go one, two. But also knows that it's it's still dangerous. Uh, three, four. I think we're going to make a move to the cairn. I really wish that we had a dwelling here that, you know, we could we could work with. Yeah, he could just jump to the cairn. He still has the take cover card. I suppose you could take the northerly path, this path, back to the inn. So let's let's get to move, 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 move to mountain five. And we are done. The White Knight is going to do the same kind of thing. One, two, three, four. But he's going to move to the Evil Valley. So he's going to move and then move, move, and then move to the valley. And then extra rest. And he's going to take, he's going to have to take a moment. So he actually probably burned a couple days with all that fighting. Um, I think she is going to hide this time and rest twice. And now she'll rest three times. Done. And she is done. So that's, uh, that is our Day 11 written. Let's play it out here. Uh, let's get a monster roll for day 11. 
Uh, it is a ooh, almost a one again. It's a three. So we got ogres, wolves, goblins, and octopuses. So that is going to cause a slight problem. Oh, he's stuck in a cave. Let me. I got to rewrite his move. He cannot do five. He can move twice. So he's going to move move in this case, and that's going to suck. That's not quite. That's not quite as impressive. So he's going to end up at two. So he knows the octopus showed up. So he's going to go one, two, like that. Although Patter is also going to show up. Patter is going to be a spider. So... Yeah, I think he's, that's fine. He just, he's going to make the move done. So he moves first. He drags the octopus out of hiding, which sucks for everybody, by the way. That, that isn't great. But he also gets patter too. That's going to pull a spider. Now, all of a sudden, the white knight's interested. He's like, well, hold on, spider. <clears throat> and done. And the white knight's going to go, but he's not hidden. He's going to get stopped right there. Oh, this is going to, oh my God, this is going to suck for everybody. Oh, geez, that is bad. That is bad. That is oh so bad. The octopus jumps in. Yeah. Yeah, because, oh, that was bad. That is a bad, bad, bad. And... The swordsman is probably just going to take cover. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. No, I think we just take cover, right? We just we just become hit. I mean, see, this might be the time to play that card and go, yeah, I'm I'm good. I'm out. I'm out, buddy. So the swordsman plays take cover. The swordsman slinks away, laughing at the white knight, the naivete of the of the old knight. And he just, poof, and he's gone. And the White Knight's like, oh, God, this octopus is going to kill me. And it probably will kill him at, at this, at, at this um, with this. Yeah, there, there is no surviving that. I mean, we'll see. So we're going to start there. Okay, so done. These guys are done. Uh, the witch. The witch is going to hide. And if she fails, she just has to fight immediately. So she hides. And that's going to give her the ability to rest a bunch of chits. And she's going to pull that one down to fatigue. And she is hidden. But she's going to get all of these. Uh, and Ruins is going to drag... The spear guys, too. So everybody's going to show up. She has a lot. She has a lot of stuff going on. That is a big old battle right there. And the Amazon is going to make the big run there. Uh, the patrol would show up, but unfortunately for her, patrol's already out. And so she uh, doesn't care. Let's do the battle most likely to result in the White Knight's death. <laughs> we'll start there. So here we are. Oh, and this flying dragon is here. So we do not have take cover. Um, so we do know that this guy's going to do light damage. So we're going to, for our encounter step, we are going to ready. We're gonna we're gonna swap that out. And when he flips, oof, we're gonna hit him. Yeah, that so that's gonna suck. Um, so we're gonna play 
I'm playing move H5. Uh, which is going to suck. So we, we've activated this weapon. We're not going to attack with it. Um, because we, because it's 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 on its its bad side, and we're gonna have to just suck this up here. So let's let's see who ends up where. Uh, one, so he flips down to the bottom. He lines up. Uh, does the spider flip? This is sort of important. Oh, he does. So that that makes life a little harder for the white knight in in the long run. So this guy hits us. He f doesn't do any damage because of the armor, and he flips, and this guy misses us. So now we're in grave peril, and this is this is the grave peril. The grave peril is now our weapon is readied, and we can play whatever we want. But we're going to get hit this round, so if the octopus lines up, we are saved. If the octopus doesn't line up, we are absolutely not saved. We are dead because the octopus auto kills us by dragging us under. So, let's roll a six. That ain't gonna line up and we are we are done. Um, does the spider flip? He doesn't and we are killed two ways and the white knight is now deceased. Well, that was a shitty day 11. <laughs> For, yeah. So uh, we have scored two prowess. Done. That's it. That is our that is our permanent score now is two, unless someone can take that prowess away from us. Uh, these two creatures remain there. Uh, the white knight is killed. His armor was destroyed by the tremendous by this. Um, I don't I actually don't know if the attack against us is canceled by the spider or the uh, the octopus. Because the spider's attack is super slow, comparatively. The octopus would have killed us first. And he's an auto-kill. I don't think he actually necessarily damages the armor or anything. Um, so I'm going to put that crap... Not that anybody else can carry any of his shit, so it doesn't really doesn't matter. Um, put his stuff there. And he has nine gold. So we will put uh, the nine gold there too. So we're going to put a little marker, a gravestone, also on this to note so that we can, you know, so that we know that there's some money there. Done. And the swordsman's like, haha, that'll show you. Now, mind you, the swordsman's going to have a hell of a time getting out of here too. Um,. So that also sucks. Let's go to the witch. The witch has a much more positive outlook uh, on her fight. You wouldn't think it, but she does have a more positive outlook on her fight. So round one, she is not hit. No, I mean, she is hit, actually. So she's hit. So that's inter interesting. Um... So there you go. So round one, she actually is not going to transform. She's going to leap out with a knife and try to gut that guy. And she's still hidden, so no one's on her sheet. So she rolls it. He lines up. Does he flip? He does flip, but it doesn't matter. She kills him with a knife. So she leaps out, stabs him with her obsidian dagger through the heart and he is dead now all these goblins pile under her sheet and target her and then in round two she's going to pop this and become the troll so that she doesn't have to worry about 
all of that. So no, hold on a second. She's gonna put all the goblins, but for the one goblin she wants to kill. And this is these are the horrid goblins. She's gonna put them there, and she's gonna put these guys here. Actually, she's gonna put one of them here. Um, she's weirdly enough, there, there you go. She's gonna put one of them in every box, and there's a reason for this. So keep in mind, these guys can only do medium damage to her. She's armored, so she kills one of those sharpness stars. Same thing here. They can only do heavy damage. The tr troll is tremendous. The reason I'm putting a goblin with a spear on each box is that so for any box, someone's going to flip. And when someone flips, she can auto hit them and kill them. And what that's going to do is it gives me a way to, preser to, to preserve the length of this combat as much as possible. Every other round, she can try to kill the little goblins that she can't auto hit. And then she's going to try to have a goblin on the hook. Um, she's going to try to have a goblin on the hook for, uh, for an auto kill. So that every other round, she can auto kill that goblin. So let's see how this goes, this, this, this strategy. So no one's flipped. We, we're playing like this. We have a one-third chance of hitting this goblin, and we do not. So what happens is um, these two guys go to the bottom, and everybody else flips this way. And again, this is only possible because I know they can't hit her. So they, they everything bounces off of her. Does box one flip? It doesn't. Does box two flip? It doesn't. Uh, does box three flip? This is the only thing that if not, nothing, fl no one flips. So there's a 70% chance of them not flipping. You um, multiply that. You, you go three times. That's a 49%. 35. So it's about a 35% that none of them will flip. And none of them flipped. So that's round one. And it's a stalemate round. Uh, oof. So she is going to target this goblin because cause if he does flip, she auto hits him. So that gives her at least a little bit of, of leeway because it gives her two chances. Let's see if she lines up with this guy. She doesn't. Um, he goes down a box. These guys come back up. These guys go down like that. And now we roll to see who flips. This box does flip. This box doesn't. Uh, so there you go. So it's the worst possible. And this box flips. So it's literally the worst possible of all worlds for the witch. She misses twice. Oh. Nope. I'm sorry. That's not true. The first round when she missed, the first round when she missed, she had fatigued her black magic. So she actually is still in this fight. This is the first stalemate round um, that she has. So there you go. So that's round two for stalemate. So now she's going to attack that guy because she can auto hit him if he doesn't flip. So where does he end up? He ends up down at the bottom. Does box one flip? It doesn't. Box two doesn't. Box three does, and then the combat is over. There you go. So she has missed three times in a row. So round one, she kills a goblin. Round two, she fatigues. Rounds three and four. Um, she has stalemates and she is done. I've confused myself only a tiny bit there.
So she didn't kill and she did not complete the goblin horde yet because there's still one of those axe goblins is still belongs to the horde. Really? That doesn't... There we go. Okay. Come on, guys. Come on. There we go. So, really bad combats all around for our heroes. <sighs> she gets one prowess for killing the one guy. And she did that with a knife. And that was a horde goblin. So she's going to just toss it. And that is done. Um, that's it. That's day 11. We are done with it. White Knight is killed. He was having a good run. Ah, uh, sort of. I screwed that up. I thought I could move deeper in. And in fact, if he moved first, he actually gets all the way in. Um, he goes and he ends up in the valley and he rests up and then can fight on his terms. And he actually can... Those fights are, are good on, on his terms. And if you know you're going in, and I think that's what's ultimately going to happen here, is once the White Knight is killed, oh, that's a good question. Once the White Knight is killed, keep in mind the octopus is a terrible, terrible fight. Regardless, because he is just not... He's too fast. He doesn't even get auto hit by the damn um, by the damn blowgun. So I think the swordsman is going to exercise the better part of valor here and just just sit. Uh, these cards go away. I cannot express to you how bummed I'm. I hate, I hate when a character dies. I do. I really, really do. Um, don't know why, just makes me feel bad. <laughs> and there you go, and he is dead. Uh, we're gonna call it there though. Uh, it's a one hour and a half, pretty good. We got through day 11. Uh, day 12, we will, we will continue this. Um, again, you're trying to get 52 prowess to beat the knight to to grab that point i don't know that anybody's going to do that maybe the witch the witch has a good stack there and i think she might spend a day or two more trying to whittle that damn stack down um she hasn't found has she found ruins one five no so that's the one problem she has she needs to find ruins one five i need to get the damn cat over here um Does it get here it gets here doing exactly what she did but so into the deep woods into the borderlands and then through and then that thing could search for that ruins one five in which case she would rest here um i will do one last thing the amazon does get 10 gold because she turns windfall in and then she burns both curse breaker and learn spell um, she's going to listen for rumors at the end. So she spends a day at the end. She does actually have to, the worst part is she also has to roll. Um, let me draw three quest cards and let's roll that she doesn't get jumped by. Oh, she does get trouble. So that's, uh, un uncool. Uh, four, an insult. So she's going to take effectively a minus five no, uh, uh, prowess because she's insulted. And I'm going to put that there. I'm going to put that there. Just to know she's been insulted by the rogues. Um, why? In case she wants to go get revenge. Um, let's flip these guys. Just consult demon, quiet night. Uh, uh. and locksmith so she has a locksmith in the high pass consult demon and quiet night so locksmith 
Consult Demon, which is a good one for her at this point. And Quiet Night is Free Rests. Uh, where is the locksmith, you might ask, in the High Pass? It is in three. So she learns of the locksmith there. <coughs> that one ain't great. It's not far, though, strangely enough. Uh, it is not far at all. If she frees him, she's going to get, oh, just end your day here. One VP and a set of keys. <coughs> I mean, I think she's going to shoot for that. So, all right, that's where we're going to end. We're going to end there. I think the witch is in an interesting position, but she does need to rest and relax and rest, right? Um, the white knight died, and that sort of pisses me off a little bit. The swordsman is in sort of a precarious position. He can't go that way, and he can't go this way without running into something. So he's going to have to hide. If he fails the hide, he is now screwed. So he is really not in not in a, a that much better a place uh, than he was before. So it is uncertain if he lives through this also. And if he does live through it, he might spend a few days just getting bounced around between those two uh, those two dangerous clearings. If he doesn't hide, does he have any recourse? His recourse would be probably to kill the spider. He does get a card. Spellmaster. Oh, that's lame. That's bad for him. And he gets to roll that crud. Mountain three. Strangely enough, that's cool that that's so close for him. Um, he is literally is right here. So his quest is here. I will say this, though, the, with, with him hidden, he is going to swap out to the damn thing. Like, he is not, not going to have that out because... I think that's the only way he possibly even lives through this is trying to get this thing <clears throat> like that. So, all right, that's it. We are done. Thank you very much. We're going to save this game and we will, <coughs> um, we'll talk to you later. Have a good new year and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.